This is the Acer Swift 3X, a very special laptop and in fact one of the first of its kind with a very interesting proposition. Could this be the right laptop for you? Let's find out in this review. Hey everyone, this is Peter from Canto Tech. Before we start, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Intel and Abinson Electroworld for supporting this video. Links to their products are in the description below. So let's start this review. The Acer Swift 3X may seem like any other usual laptop that you might see in the market. But you see, the main difference is the new technology that can be found inside of it. Currently, it's the first laptop in the world that has the new Intel Iris Xe Max GPU the very first discrete mobile GPU solution from Intel. So most laptops have an option of having an integrated graphics solution or a discrete graphics solution. So integrated graphics are usually built in with the CPU. And integrated graphics are normally found in laptops with just you know daily usage in mind, such as for browsing or for, the, for productivity applications. So entry-level laptops normally should have just integrated graphics. Discrete graphics, on the other hand, are used for more intensive graphics rendering solutions, such as for video editing or for gaming. Uh, and normally, discrete graphics have just two brands, either NVIDIA or the Red Team. And now, Intel, after such a long time in the market, has finally created a discrete graphics solution to compete with against the NVIDIA or the Red Team. Thus, the Acer Swift 3X was born along with two other laptops with it. It is one of the very first laptops with a mass-produced, commercially available, discrete graphics solution for mobile called the Intel Iris Xe Max GPU or codenamed DG1. So again, apart from the Iris Xe Max GPU, the Acer Swift 3X looks pretty much like any other Swift-labeled laptop in the market. That's not actually a bad thing because the Swift lineup is a very popular mid-range line for Acer. It comes in either Safari Gold or Steam Blue. And what I have here is the Safari Gold version. So it looks pretty nice. Um, it's more of like bronze, actually. It's very lightweight because it weighs just around 1.37 kilograms. So it definitely won't break your back when you carry it around. It has a 14-inch IPS screen with an 84% screen-to-body ratio. And as for the screen quality, it has a 72% NTSC color gamut, while eye strain and colors are improved with Acer ExaColor and Acer Color Intelligence. Now, the lid has a unique teal-colored hinge, which makes the keyboard tilt a bit when opened. Now, this is not only pretty cool, but also provides more ventilation for the underside of the laptop, and thus providing better thermals. It has a chiclet-style keyboard with backlighting, which is pretty standard, although I'm personally not a fan of the power button placement because it is on the upper rightmost side. So normally when I try to reach for the delete key, I press the power button key in this kind of layout. Now spacing between the keys is just right and not too cramped, while the keys themselves are soft to the touch and are not in any way tactile or clicky. The touchpad is pretty standard and receptive to touch as long as the Intel graphics drivers are well updated. The Swift 3X also has a fingerprint sensor right here on the bottom right part of the laptop, while the webcam placement is up on top of the screen. And now let's talk about the ports. There aren't so many to be honest, but the limitation does keep the laptop on the thinner side. Now on the right side of the laptop, there's the Kensington lock, the charging indicators, a single USB 3.2 slot, and the 3.5 millimeter combo audio jack. On the left side, there's a power port, an HDMI 2.0 port, another USB 3.2 port, and the Thunderbolt 4 port. Now the Thunderbolt 4 port is pretty special because Intel has been pushing Thunderbolt for quite some time. With this, users can be able to plug in a whole lot more devices that require more bandwidth, such as being able to output 4K videos with the right adapters. And in theory, it should be able to output even 8K video or 4K times 2 with the right adapters again. So I guess it would be recommended to use a USB Type-C hub to expand to more ports because definitely you would need a display port to do that. Charging is done via the included charger, but you can also use the a uh, Thunderbolt port to charge the laptop using a PD 2.0 compatible charger. Now let's talk about battery life. The Acer Swift 3X has a rating for 17.5 hours of battery life. Although to be fair, it is quite unlikely you will reach this unless the laptop is on power saving mode all the time and just on standby. Now a more realistic estimate after testing is around less than 9 hours on productivity applications. If you play games, it will probably just around 2-3 to three hours, depending on the game and the usage. 
but overall it's still quite good. And now moving on to the internals of the laptop, which makes this laptop so unique. It does already come with Windows 10 OS and Microsoft Office for Home and Student 2019. Now all of the software is powered by the CPU, which is an 11th gen Intel Core i7 1165G7 processor. And this is where it all gets a bit more interesting. It's a quad core CPU with four Willow Cove processor cores capable of eight threads. And each core can clock from 2.8 gigahertz to a max turbo frequency of 4.7 gigahertz. At once, all cores can clock up to 4.1 gigahertz. Now the 11th gen CPU does have a lot of improvements over previous iterations. Primarily with the Iris XC graphics, which is Intel's new integrated graphics solution. Thus, the Acer Swift 3X comes with both Iris XE and Iris XE Max. For the CPU, 11th gen CPUs are based on the 10 nanometer super thin design, which is basically a new architecture that Intel claims will offer better speeds at lower power consumption. 11th gen CPUs also come with Thunderbolt 4 integration, which the Swift 3X already has. It also comes with Wi Fi 6 and other stuff like software optimizations and some new AI. Now all of this is centralized on what Intel calls the Intel Evo platform, which is basically a new design that improves AI hardware acceleration, but to simply put it, it's just a way for Intel to optimize thin and light laptops to be able to save battery life while maintaining great performance. In addition, Intel boasts about things like longer battery life, instant wake, fast charging, etc. Uh, which might seem great, but the performance in real life usage so far is minimally incremental at best. There is some difference, but don't expect it to be super noticeable. It will hopefully improve though with more updates. In standard CPU tests, which is the Cinebench R23, the Acer Swift 3X scored 4601 on the multi-core test, while scoring 957 on the single core test. Aside from the CPU, the Acer Swift 3X also features 16GB of LPDDR4X RAM and 512GB NVMe SSD, and this makes it very capable of loading applications quickly and running multiple applications with ease. To be honest, I had no issues with this and boot up time was extremely fast. Now again, the most exciting thing about this 11th generation notebook is, as I mentioned earlier, the discrete graphics or the Intel Iris XC Max GPU that goes along with it. The Intel Iris XT Max focuses on a technology called Intel Deep Link and Additive AI, which enables the 11th gen CPU and the Iris XT discrete GPU to work together to enable faster media encoding or rendering with hyperencode for up to 1.78 times. Now, ideally, this should be able to optimize certain software such as Handbrake, OBS, XSplit, and others. Currently, though, there is not much support for other software which we normally use, like Adobe. Photoshop or Premiere Pro. So it is quite difficult to benchmark it right now, especially since drivers are also not that optimized yet. Now with regards to gaming, as I mentioned earlier, discrete GPUs are supposed to level up gaming performance, but apparently the Intel Iris XC Max is not a full-on gaming GPU. To be honest, I actually ran into some issues while pushing the Acer Swift 3X to use the Iris XC Max GPU when using games, because by default, it will use the integrated graphics solution which is the Iris XE if you don't set it in the Intel Graphics Manager uh, software. Once I did test it though, the Acer Swift 3X can only run games at 1080p for almost 40 to 60 FPS at either medium or low settings for Dota 2, CSGO, or Valorant as shown here. So casual gaming should be fine, but trying to run AAA titles like Doom for example or Shadow of the Tomb Raider would definitely be a challenge. Thus, I guess the main problem with the Iris XC Max is that not a lot of software do support it yet. And Intel has already explained this. This is in contrast to Nvidia or the red team that has already been in the market for such a long time and have already some partnerships and hardware integrations with um, specific software applications. Now overall, as a conclusion, I was deeply excited for the Acer Swift 3X only because of the potentially new experience it can bring out from its hardware once all the software currently available in the market are optimized for it. Now, while casual gaming is okay, uh, it is definitely not for gamers or hardcore gamers, but I would have to say it's more for the content creators, either the videographers or photographers, or even the social media personalities who would like a, a thin and light laptop for everyday use, primarily because of its focus on hyperencode, which should make rendering and encoding much, much faster uh, especially in the future. Now, given the current price, 
the Acer Swift 3X is still a powerful laptop considering its CPU, its GPU, uh, its RAM, and its storage. Uh, its base configuration as it is is fantastic and a great value considering its future potential. So that's our overall take on the Acer Swift 3X. Availability and pricing are linked below. And if you like this review, please don't forget to like and subscribe on our channel for more reviews and tech news. Again, this is Peter from Canto Tech. I'll see you all soon. Bye!